Thank you. So I actually uh, already did a presentation at AppSec USA about this subject, bot detection, about two years ago. And at the time, that was around the time where we launched our first version of Bot Manager. And uh, to be honest, at the time, I really saw that by now, I'd be done with this subject. But the truth is, we're not, and we never will be. And that's kind of the reason why I decided to come back uh, this year, is to kind of reflect a bit on um, our experience at Akamai building a bot detection system and um, the challenge that we're seeing. And uh, you know, if you ever want yourself, you know, if you're a website owner and you want to, to build your own detection, uh, bot detection mechanism, then at least you'll be aware about what you're facing. And uh, you know, it's a long road ahead. So I've been at Akamai for about 12 years. I started as a technical support engineer uh, and then moved as a, in, as a solution architect in our professional services organization. And uh, during that time, I spent a lot of time helping customers dealing with issues that were mostly caused by bot. And back in the day, we were calling this DOS, DOS issues. It was all about DOS. It was not this concept of bot detection or, or bot management. We were talking about DOS, but at the end of the day, since the beginning, it's always been about uh, automated traffic wrecking havoc uh, on, a, on a website. So I have had a lot of first-hand experience uh, dealing with bots, and uh, eventually, after a few years, uh, working in, as a solution architect, uh, developing some custom solution for our customers to better deal with the problem, uh, eventually, I managed to convince enough people in my organization to eventually go for building a bot detection product. So today, I want to kind of go over kind of the history about how we've gone about this and, uh, and then talk about some of the challenges we're facing, uh, how bot reacts to our, to our detection mechanism, and how we need to evolve constantly our product to, um, to, to keep, you know, stay ahead of the curve, basically. And also, I'll talk about some good practices as you as a website owner, what can you do to help uh, to, to facilitate the bot protection against bot, because sometimes some site architecture make it that much more difficult to, to be able to, to deal with the problem efficiently. So it's been a long journey so far, uh, and uh, we started with a simple detection, mechanism, simple detection mechanisms, and gradually we, we had to improve our detection so to kind of stay ahead of the curve. And also along the way, uh, we kind of came up with the idea of the concept of bot management, because it's not necessarily about just detecting them. Uh, what we realized as well is that customers just didn't want us to simply detect them, they also want us wanted us to kind of tell them who they were, categorize them, and, um, and also they wanted to have some kind of flexibility on how we respond to the bot traffic depending on who they are, where they're coming from, and uh, what they're after. So, so anyway, we started uh, that big adventure of creating this bot detection product uh, back in 2015. So we were not the first one to enter that, that space. We were not the pioneers. There was already a, a few companies already out there that were doing it. Uh, but Akamai being such a large player in the, in the web industry, we carry somewhere around 30% of the worldwide, uh, worldwide web. So it made sense for us to actually have a way to detect and manage bot at the edge, and then that provides a great offload to, uh, to the, our customers' web servers. So we spent the major part of 2015 talking to customers, gathering requirements, and try to understand what's the story. So what they're worried about. Is it about scraper? Is it about uh, fraud? Is it about uh, you know, account shaker? And at the time, really, there was, the story was mainly around uh, scraper. Uh, account shaker was kind of a starting to becoming an issue, uh, but that was probably not the main issue. So in the first iteration, uh, we decided to go for building a product that will focus on being able to detect scrapers. So basically, uh, bots that try to harvest all the data from your, from your website, and then they use that in some kind of ways, and that could potentially hurt your business. 
so after we did some kind of gathering and stuff like that, then what you know from from the, our market research, so to speak, and also from uh, the research we did on how to to best detect that bot traffic, uh, what became evident is that uh, we need a solution that cover that could of course detect bot, but also categorize them, provide good visibility on them so that we can show, customer can see, okay, the bot is, what is, what is the bot doing, what is the bot is after, uh, and also be able to uh, efficiently respond to them, and depending on the type of the bots, then uh, provide the most adequate response. Like for example, search engine, you want to make sure that you're prime citizen because they can help position your uh, your site uh, makes your site visible on the internet, whereas some random bots that we detect through various detection mechanisms, you don't necessarily want them to 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 access your traffic, so your, your data. And of course, your users, you want them to uh, uh, to 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 have full access to uh, to your to your to your content. So in a way, bot detection or bot management is a way also to kind of prioritize what traffic makes it to your uh, to your web server, and you know, it's kind of like a quality of service mechanism in a way. So in uh, early 2016, we, we launched our first version, and uh, the detections that we added, what we call we call passive detection, because all the today was uh, looking at the requests that were coming to us, looking at the, the header signature, looking at the user agent looking at the reputation, looking at how fast uh, they were making requests. So, and you know, ba based on this, uh, based on how much anomalies we, we found in the request, then we could prob probabilist probabilistically uh, determine whether you were a bot or a human. And that actually worked out pretty well. Uh, that, that, that got us so far, we were doing pretty well in the, in the scraper uh, kind of story. Uh, we could detect a fair amount of scraper, more than we could, we, we could ever before, so that was kind of a nice victory for us. But, of course, the bot uh, evolved, and as we were adding more, uh, we, were, we were implementing that solution to more and more customers, then uh, bots started to realize that there was this new detection mechanism going on, and they evolved, and they started to be more uh, trying to pay more attention in the, what, the way the header signature looked like, and so then the, some of the detection started to not being so efficient. So we quickly moved on into a, a more da uh, dynamic detection strategy, which uh, involves testing whether the, the client support cookies, whether the client support JavaScript, and if they do, let's collect a fingerprint to, to look at the characteristic of the machine, and uh, once we get our fingerprint, let's look for uh, elements that are uh, typical of uh, bots, like uh, headless browsers. So how do we rec recognize anomalies that are typical of Phantom GS or headless, other headless Chrome or headless browsers, this kind of thing. So that also got us so far. So we launched this in uh, the end of 2016. Uh, but then around that time, that the, the, the story uh, around bot kind of changed again. That was more around account checker fraud, uh, gift card fraud, people trying to, uh, to, to, to guess the pin number associated to a gift card. So we had to kind of adapt to that and find a solution, the right solution. What we had so far, uh, all the passive detection and active detection wouldn't cut it. So we start to get interested in uh, behavior anomaly detection. So behavior anomaly de detection is uh, not only, so the detection we have so far, uh, we are really looking at what the requests we're receiving look like, how fast they're coming in, what's the reputation, and also the characteristics of the machine based on the JavaScript fingerprint. Uh, so we knew a lot about the machine, but we didn't know anything whether there was actually a human controlling that machine. And the best way to do this is to check if we see some key press, if we see some mouse movement, if we see some mouse click, if we see some touch on the screen, or this kind of thing. So hence the, the idea of moving forward with behavior anomaly detection. Uh, from there, there was a choice for us to build it or ourselves or also to look, for, to look around to see if there was any startup that I cannot, cannot do this kind of thing. So we, weigh in the pros and cons, and uh, finally we decided to 
uh, we found this uh, cool company uh, startup called Cyberfan, and uh, we tried their product, we liked it. Uh, the customer we tried it with, they liked it too, and they bought the product. So we thought if they like it, we, and we like it, we should might as well buy the company. And we acquired the company and we spent uh, the um, most of uh, the early day, the early quarters of 2017 integrating that, that solution uh, into our product, Mod Manager. So there was two, there's two aspects of it. There's, uh, when you do behavior anomaly de detection, the way, um, you know, the way you connect this behavioral data depends on the type of client. If you're for web client, regular browsers, then you're gonna use JavaScript because that's what the browser understands. But for a native app, JavaScript doesn't work. So then we need an SDK for that to, to, be, install on, on, to be installed on the, on the app so that we can collect all that behavioral data. So that's, so what we released in early 2017 was really the web solution and then we had a subsequent release at the um, beginning of this year actually where we introduced uh, the solution for native app. So now today uh, with the bot manager product we are pretty well positioned where we have uh, you know, pretty complete solution where we can you know, look at the, the header, the, the, re the request, what it looks like. We can look at the characteristics of the machine and we can look as well at uh, uh, you know, how the user is using that machine. But it's still not quite enough because as soon as we put all of this into a lot of uh, sites, then uh, bots operators start to evolve their, their botnet and try to fake all that behavioral data. Uh, they try to replay the telemetry or this kind of thing. It's, it's easy enough to collect the tele telemetry and you know, sometimes they go to as far as trying to reverse engineer whatever we're doing, and you know, they're gonna try to find a way. So we, we have more and more have to look at additional uh, signals that's available to us, and uh, through some uh, statistical models and differ differentiate between what really looks legit, what's really human, and what's really uh, not human, because it's always, you know, so, so hard as they're trying, so far they're, they're still ne not able, just like, if we're looking at a lot of parameters, then there's always gonna be something that's gonna tell us at some point, this is not quite right, this is not quite human, this is not, doesn't fit the typical human behaviors, doesn't fit the typical, typical human, uh, you know, the, the request characteristic we see from the client. So it, the, the point is, it, it, this problem of being, do, doing bot detection, it's very hard and it's always a never ending story. It's an arms race. Uh, we, we keep, we keep uh, trying to, get, to stay ahead of the curve, but the problem we have is we, just like any company, we have a fairly limited resource, uh, engineering resource and research resource. Uh, but it seems like we are facing a, a very large pool of people who, you know, that's, 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 that's what they do, pretty, pretty much the, um, you know, the, for them, attacking a, a website and taking over an account is, is pretty, that's their business model. That's, uh, you know, once an account is taken over, once a gift card is taken over, they, they resell it on the dark web. So that's how they make money. So they, they have a big incentive for doing whatever they can to, to break what we're doing. So it's, it's a never ending story. So if you ever think about building your bot detection product, I would recommend that you join a company that already has a bot detection product rather than build your own, unless you're ready for, uh, you know, having a staff of at least 10 people and uh, continue doing this for the rest of, of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could come back two years from now doing another talk and I probably will tell you I'm not done yet. I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm, we're, we're still fighting those bots. So I talked a bit about bot management. Well, what is it really? So it's, I think I alluded, that, uh, alluded to that already. Uh, so really it's, it's about being able to uh, answer, respond to the bot more intelligently. Uh, because sometimes what we discovered in the early days of bot manager, even when we didn't have very strong detection, is that if you have not so strong detection, but you have very strong response strategy, then you can get away with, with uh, fooling the bots for quite a while. Uh, they're not going to, if you keep feeding them data, even if the data is not, 
you know, is not real data. You're feeding them something from a, uh, from a honeypot or you're feeding them cash data that's somewhat dated, somewhat old. They won't, they won't realize right away. So you might get away to with having some, you know, average detection at the end, being able to, um, to still efficiently deal with them and offer a better quality uh, of service for your regular users. So it's basically a continuous challenge. Um, as our bot detection product evolves, so do bots as well. Uh, so we try to, they, they really innovate and, and sometimes we, we feel that they, we should hire them. Uh, so we need to find a way to, to actually, you know, send them a typical respo a response specific to targeting the bot operator so that, you know, if they're really looking for a job, we, know we, have, we have openings in our data science group. Um, but so the typical issues these days that we're facing, the, the kind of uh, attacks, you know, like three years ago, that was all about scraping, but what we hear from customer now, it's really about account checker. So account checker is really uh, a bunch of credentials were stolen from a, from a company. It was published on the dark web. Somebody bought that list. And what they do is replay all these credentials against multiple websites. Uh, using off-the-shelf attack tools, you, you can find some on GitHub, or they build their own that target a particular website in order to, to fit their structure more, more closely. And uh, you know, once they account, once they find a match, then uh, they publish on that match on the dark web for somebody else to, to pretty much um, buy it, and uh, that somebody else that they will take it over and um, you know, com commit what other fraud they, they want to commit. Uh, gift card on loyalty point fraud is also a big issue. Um, so somebody trying to guess what's a pin associated to, uh, to the gift card ID, uh, and then that's resold somewhere else. So you as a, as a, as a user or as a gift card, then you all of a sudden you go buy a product and you want to use your gift card and your gift card is empty. And that's cost, um, that costs e-commerce customer a lot of money. And, um, you know, with our product, we were able to re resolve this. Uh, for airline or hotels or cruise line, uh, one of the big deal for them is uh, checking of, of inventory. Uh, so checking how many, how many seats there is left on the flight or uh, the price of the seats and this kind of thing. And uh, for, to some extent, depending on how their site is architecture, uh, architected, sometimes it causes them that uh, pretty much the the availability of the, seat, the seats is completely locked. Uh, they, so regular users won't even be able to, uh, to, to, to buy those seats, so to reserve those seats. So that's a big problem for them. All right, so we've been working with customers uh, for, for quite a while now with, with bot detection. And uh, they, they, what's interesting for us is to kind of observe how the bots react once we put our product uh, on the website and when we start mitigating that activity. So typically what we see on the early days when we put the product uh, in line, then uh, we realize that we're dealing with bots that are not that clever. That's just pretty much a somewhat sophisticated script who are, who have, uh, that have somewhat well-formed uh, header signature. Uh, they're usually pretty good at spoofing to pronounce that I'm Firefox or I'm Chrome. Uh, and then the distribution also is a must. Uh, so they distribute their, their botnet pretty, pretty widely. You know, 10,000 nodes or 100,000 nodes is pretty common. And you see that spanning, you know, all the continents. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint. And it's every, every single node is only sending a handful of requests per minute. So, it, you know, none of the thing like reputation or rate control or, or request anomaly uh, detection, header anomaly detection will, will not uh, will not detect this kind of traffic. But then with, with the behavior anomaly detection, then you realize there's nobody really behind the machine, so that's how we managed to get them. Uh, so as soon as we start mitigating the traffic, like a week or two after, uh, typically what we see is, uh, you know, the bots get blocked, so they will try whatever they can for, you know, changing the header signature, spread even more, and slow down again their, their request rate, this kind of thing. Rotate the user agent of a single request just in case you've tried to block them based on user agent. 
Uh, and then none, when none of this works, uh, then they start the replay game. So, you know, with the product, we, we, uh, we inject session cookies and we, um, you know, we also collect some, some, some telemetry. So what they end up doing is like, you know, they, they see what we're doing. So they're trying to replay uh, a valid user scenario. So they go as a regular user on a website, they try to, to record all of this and replay all of this. So that's, that's a replay game. And of course, we have to have uh, detection uh, to, to, to make sure that those replays uh, are, de are well detected and then we you know, classify them as bot. So at that point, um, the least motivated attackers, they will pretty much move on to a different target. And that target may not necessarily, necessarily be a different uh, website. It might be a different endpoint that offers similar, um, uh, similar services on your website. So for example, login. You may have a login for, uh, you know, a login API for user to log in onto their account. A login API when they log in during checkout. May have a different login API for um, uh, the, your native app. And uh, if, not, if all of them are not equally protected, then it will go for the one that's not protected and they will continue their, their thing. So that's why it's also important that you protect all your endpoints uh, equally. Uh, otherwise, they're gonna go after it. But now if all your endpoints are, are protected, the least motivated, they will just move on to a, to a different target. We've seen that. Uh, but it's, it depends on the, um, how big of a target you are. Like uh, if the value of breaking an account on your site is super high and they, they can make a lot of money from it, then they will, they will try a lot more things, they will, they will continue. Um, also at this point, what we are, what we are seeing is that, um, you know, attackers who pretty much, you know, downloaded a attack tool from GitHub and don't really know how it works, they just know how to use it. Um, then as soon as the attack tool is not efficient against the, against the site, they will move on to somebody, some, something else. But for the one who control their own attack tools, who develop their own attack tools, then they will try, they will try a bit harder. So the next step for, for the ones that are more motivated is uh, potentially move on. They realize that we are doing behavior anomaly detection. So uh, the next step for them is to move on to, uh, to, to, to go from a, uh, a script, a very well written script, very sophisticated script to headless browser to kind of replicate, to mimic uh, what a typical uh, client or browser would do. Um, so that's, again, that, that's the kind of things that we're able to detect as well. Um, you know, headless browser, this kind of thing have a, have a, part, have a particular signature uh, and uh, we, have, you know, we have to, to be able to detect that. So at this point, um, you know, some go further. Uh, Bot operators, in some extent, are our best, are, in, are an extension of our QA uh, because they, will, they are pretty good sometimes at finding bugs in our code, uh, you know, non, some, some uh, exceptions that are not handled properly, they will find them and if they find them, they're gonna go after it and they're still gonna use it for a while uh, to, <laughs> to bypass our detection. So uh, in a way for us, it's good to improve our product, but that's, you know, that's another thing they do is, is try to, uh, to see how they can crack and find vulnerability into the code. Um, uh, the, and the other things that we've tried, we've seen as well, is they try to DOS us. They try to DOS our detection engine. Uh, the theory here is that if uh, you know if detection engine is down, then hopefully it will fail open, meaning that will detection will be bypassed. And we've seen that as well. Uh, so the, the, it's very important for the, the system detection engine to be scalable to, to be able to handle very large attack. So bot detection market, a few words about this. It's, uh, it's pretty, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's not very big industry, or at least it's not very old, it's about five years old. There's uh, quite a bunch of companies out there, web security companies out there who, who said they have a bot detection uh, product, but really if you look at it in details, there are actually not that many who have something that's mature enough to be able to sustain uh, some, you know, sophisticated attacks. So if you're after, uh, but detection products, and you, are, you have to be careful. You have to, uh, to go for something that, that's mature enough and can handle things properly. Uh, to me, I, 
we've evaluated quite a, quite a, a lot of those companies while we were in the market to, to buy a startup. And um, I know already about like four or five worldwide who are decent, uh, offer decent, uh, decent product. Um, detection accuracy is one of the big deal. Uh, so, you know, we have OSIS detection. Uh, none of the detection is perfect. And uh, we always have to balance between false positive and, true on, and uh, false negative. Uh, it's, it's the worst thing that can happen. You put a detection mechanism. Uh, if you have too much false positive, it's just useless because you won't be able to, uh, to, uh, to detect, um, you know, to take action on that detection. So it's, you know, it's kind of pointless. You, you know some of the bots, but you don't know, uh, you, you, don't, you don't know how to act on it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's always a balancing game to, to, to kind of set the, uh, tune the, the, set, uh, the detection method in such a way that we have a good balance between uh, false positive and uh, false negative. So that's why as a, for detection products, you have to have uh, multiple detection mechanism because each one of them pretty much compensate for each of those flows so that you can set the threshold of each detection technique high enough so that you don't have uh, uh, false positive, but then, you know, another detection algorithm will actually take over for the flows of the previous one. So uh, you can't just go for a detection mechanism, a detection system that offer you one single methodology. It's just not going to work. Uh, kind of talk about that, so I'll skip because we're kind of running out of time. So let me go on to best practices. So things that you can do as a website owner to, to kind of help uh, deal with a bot problem. Uh, what I see sometimes is developer, you know, they want to develop an API for login, for example, and having a single purpose uh, API for all my type of client, um, it makes sense as a development because then you only have to maintain one API. Uh, to protect this, though, it's harder because, uh, you know, a native app and a web client and, you know, if you also make uh, that, that endpoint available to um, to, to your partners to log in or this kind of thing, those different type of clients, they won't have the same capabilities. So the way you protect, protect them is completely different. And then for as a, you know, for a protection system to be able to differentiate who's who and, you know, what's their capabilities so that you can challenge them the right way is difficult. So ideally you want to have, to create an, an API for each type of client. So one API for your web, one API for native app, and then if you have partners you want to provide access to as well, separate that because that's otherwise it's kind of difficult to deal with. Uh, protect all your endpoints. Uh, if you have multiple endpoints, just like I said earlier, protect them equally because otherwise they, they will go for the weakest link. And uh, you know, some, I've seen some customers, they. So, you know, they know about their latest endpoint, what's, what's current on their website, and, uh, and lately we work with a, with a customer and uh, they, they found that they were under attack, and, uh, but we couldn't see, we couldn't see on our product, we, we're not detecting anything, we're not seeing any false, positive, false negative either, so what's going on? And then realize that the attacker were after an API that had been decommissioned uh, about like two years ago, but it was still live. So it was something legacy, but still live. So the, the attacker was going after it. And so we had to quickly bring it, you know, add protection into it, and then the attack went away. So clean up your endpoint uh, to, you know, if you don't use them anymore, decommission them for good. Um, when you have a bot detection set up, so, you know, uh, I talked about the, 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 the accuracy of each detections. Uh, it's very important that each detection is tuned at the right level so that you can take action on that, on that detection. Otherwise, if it's not tuned, you're gonna see a bunch of false positive and you know, that's not gonna work. Uh, the reflex, typically what is that I see, uh, some, of my some of the customers we're working with, they're saying, yep, yeah, uh, it's okay, well, we're okay with false positive and then when we detect a bot, we'll, we'll block that bot. But so then what does it mean? You're gonna find, you, you see that bot, you're gonna, Define a signature for that because you're gonna see, okay, it's got this user agent, it's got this header, header signature, it's got this particular characteristic, it's coming from these IPs. So you're going to create your custom signature, you're gonna say, okay, to block this bot, this is the characteristics. Great, it's gonna work for maybe two hours if you're lucky, after two hours, you're going to change your game and you're back to square one. You have to play that workable game. 
Whack-a-mole game is fun at the arcade, but don't play it in real life because honestly, you're gonna be getting very frustrated and uh, it's just not working. So it's, it's, it's best to optimize your detection mechanisms as offered by the product or whatever you're building yourself and, uh, and, and, and just take action on that detection mechanism instead of trying to extract, you know, single out one particular botnet identify it and then try to block it this way. It's just not working long term. So it's not, it's not the best way to go. So with that, uh, that was kind of uh, my story around bot detection. It's a hard problem. Uh, if you still want to go for it, good luck, but you're in for the long haul. Thank you. So we may have a few minutes if there's any questions. Yeah. Uh, so how do you define whether you need a bot detection program? It's, it's really depends whether you see any kind of attacks, you know, if you're vulnerable. Uh, I, I see a lot of e-commerce customers, they are, they're pretty much all vulnerable to all these, uh, you know, attacks. Uh, I can't, I can't take over on this kind of thing. So, you know, the, the pretty much the way it starts is you're getting, you're getting attacked. So then, that's where customers can start to call us. Yes. So your question is, is there any vendor out there who, who are the best, who are on top of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I, I would say there's probably four or five of us who are really kind of neck and neck uh, in the way, in terms of quality of detection on, ter on a level of maturity. So pretty much if you're after a detection mechanism, a, a product that, that does detection, you need to kind of look in those five vendors because that's probably where it's gonna provide you the best value. There's also quite a bunch of startups, but with those you have to be careful about their level of maturity and their ability to kind of flex be flexible and change things rapidly. Uh, sometimes they're very flexible because they're startups, so you're gonna try to please you no matter what. But then maybe scaling will be an issue. You know, we've seen many times uh, bots trying to DOS our detection engine. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, you have to look at different, uh, different aspects. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much everyone.